the iron carbon system uh, last time as far as i remember we have uh, okay sorry okay, last time is iron carbon system so today we'll uh, go deep into heat treatment okay uh, let me share the slide first <clears throat> True. Most probably today, uh, we will finish a bit early because uh, we are. Hmm. We are having like uh, we have finished last time the iron carbon system. So for today, the topic for this week is only uh, thermal processing. That is what left for the uh, for this week syllabus. So I think we can finish a bit early. And all right. Okay. So boleh nampak sebenarnya slide. Boleh sir. Boleh. Eh? All right. So last time betul lah. Eh? Last time kita belajar iron carbon system kan. Last time satu jam, I think I, I yeah, I have uh, finished the iron carbon system. So okay, let's see. Uh, Okay. <clears throat> okay, today's lesson. Aduh, ada lagi. So today's lesson we will focus on the thermal processing of metals. Okay. So basically so far we have uh we have came across a few of thermal uh, processing mainly uh, we learn about annealing actually when we learn about the core work we do have some input on annealing while we are explaining about the hot working and we talk about uh, those uh, recovery recrystallization and grain growth there's three stages of annealing uh, but today we will have um, more uh, detail on the thermal processing. So basically, uh, first we will have a look on annealing, annealing, and what we call normalizing, and then we will uh, learn about quenching. Quenching. Quenching, the words quench, sometimes you use when you are thirsty, especially when you are fasting, you quench your thirst by, you know, drinking some water that is quenching, eh? quenching and tempering. Okay, annealing, normalizing, quenching and tempering. And finally, we will take a look on the effect of this heat treatment on the mechanical behavior okay so well uh yeah we have learned before that when a material and well specifically metals is uh put into uh cool work when it is deformed plastically so what happened was there was a strain hardening where the density of dislocation increased and uh, the 
uh, all this dislocation, the strain, they entangle with each other, so it becomes uh, hardened. Yeah? And this hardening, this mode of hardening, actually, well, while it's increased the strength, at the same time, the ductility uh, was uh, decreased. And this effect we remove by annealing process by applying some heat to uh, recover the uh, materials to release this strain and so on. And this is what we have learned so far. And also, uh, previously we learned about what you call homo. Mm, homogenizing okay this is uh, when when you um, do casting we learn in, in in casting when you do casting there will be a gradient of composition this is resulting from the uh, when you look at the phase diagram okay phase diagram at different temperature the composition of the phase of the solid phase will change from time to time depending on the temperature so we have when the solidification occurs uh, at uh, relatively uh, fast or uh, the cooling, the cooling occurs fast, so there will be gradient of composition, where which we call the cord structure, the cord structure. The, this one we have learned in in, in the phase diagram. You can check back what why do this cord structure uh, occurs. But uh, the thing is, by applying heat, by uh, providing heat to the casted as cast material, so you can get a more homogeneous uh, structure. This is what we call homogenizing in general. Okay, and in specifically, we can say it is annealing or normalizing okay so we look back at this uh, actually this heat treatment we are uh, focusing on is the heat treatment on steel okay on steel i think we have uh, covered in the previous uh, lesson what is steel so just a quick recap steel is a uh, iron introduce which which uh iron which is uh, alloyed by carbon and the amount of the carbon as an alloying element must not exceed two percent that is where we can consider the material as steel okay and I think you guys already familiar with this. Uh, this, uh, this is a phase diagram of steel and carbon system. Okay, so actually, uh, when we talk about heat treatment, we is a process. When we see the definition. Is a process of heating and cooling of metals using specific method to obtain desired mechanical properties. So we want certain properties. We want maybe we want a fine structure or to have a high strength. We want fine structure. So we use heat and cooling depending on the process to get such uh, properties. If you want to uh, have uh, like ductile uh, properties, then we use heat to alter or to modify 
Okay, so the heat treatment, the 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 purpose is to get desired mechanical properties by manipulating the heat input and uh, there are some uh, example of this heat treatment annealing normalizing punching and tempering so these are the uh, process that we are going to have a look after this and uh, just to make it very clear, we are talking now about this particular this particular area where we have steel. So basically, we we are going to we are we are having a look on the iron carbon system. So this actually the heat treatment basically we focus here this area this area okay this area though it's not it's not match um perfectly but we are talking about this area okay this is still okay below two percent is still so we are talking about this area okay so okay just now we talk about the annealing yeah? annealing so in in definition is a heat treatment process that alter microstructure of metal to change its mechanical or electrical properties of metals Annealing is used to reduce hardness, increase ductility, and help eliminate internal stress. So, and this annealing process can be divided into three uh, most common process the full annealing, process annealing, and spherodizing. So, there are three kinds of annealing, full annealing, process annealing, spherodizing. Okay, so we are going to take a look on those three. Okay, let's see the full annealing first. So, utilize in steel that will be machined or will experience extensive plastic deformation during forming, forming operation. This treatment is performed to produce coarser, coarser microstructure, which will increase its ductility. So you see, we say just now the the, the heat treatment. We, we what is the definition? Uh, in short, we can say uh, we want uh, certain uh properties and our desire we have our criteria we have our desired properties and we manipulate the heat and we manipulate the cooling process that is a heat treatment and in this case in in full annealing in full annealing what is the properties that we are targeting it is we want to have more ductile material that is our target and to have that material, we have to got this uh, more coarse microstructure. We learned that the finer the microstructure, the finer the grain, the harder or the, the higher, the, the less ductile the material will be. So if we want the opposite, which is a ductile material, we need a coarse microstructure. So to achieve that, we carry out full annealing okay so where do we use this ductile material then we use it for forming operation we know that when we do forming we will uh, apply those uh, uh, forces and we want to uh, form yeah, this this metal so this metal will uh, 
undergone a uh, large amount of plastic deformation so to prepare to prepare that material we need uh, it to be ductile so that is where we use the full annealing so what is the process of full annealing so you see we raise the temperature we heat up at certain uh, time and then we cool it down and uh, well to have a closer look on the temperature we must again go back and see this one okay so for metal this is the let's say okay okay Okay, full anything. Okay, before if we, I, I think you, you need to, you need to familiar with. Uh, so this line you're talking, you take toy line, eh? This one. Okay. At first, just remember that. So we call it S C one. So heat above A C three. This one, I think you remember here is the austenite tonight this is uh for ferrite and here is the light yang sebelum ni yang face diagram to iron dengan carbon Okay, so I hope you remember. So we do normalizing. Uh, sorry, we do the full annealing by heating up the material above AC3. Okay, above AC3 means it form austenite it forms austenite and then the key of full annealing is to leave inside the furnace to leave inside the furnace so the cooling is very slow it's very slow so when the cooling is very slow means there are more heat input and when more heat input we know there will be grain growth so it become coarser as a result, it will become more ductile. Uh, okay, sorry. Eh. So, uh, saya tanya, korang yang hari tu ingat tak? Yang face diagram yang hari tu? Iron dengan carbon tu? Ada, ada ingatan tak? Saya tak ingat. Kalau tak ingat, saya rasa saya kena buat recap sikit sebab uh, it's very related lah. Doktor. Ya. Yeah. Uh, note ni boleh tak doktor upload dekat e-learning? Oh ada, ada. Nanti saya lepas lecture saya, saya upload. Okay. Saya tahu. Hmm. Okay, so mana? Saya rasa kena cerita lelaki sikit. Unless nanti saya cerita kamu pun tak faham. 
<laughs> saya dah kena baca sekali lagi pula so my purpose is for you guys to understand during the class you don't need to revise you just need to absorb that is my target lah ok ok lah so macam ni lah uh, just in short eh short a short recap because we do have that uh, zero time Okay. Oh. Yeah, so metal, when we talk about iron, okay, we have this iron. Yeah, iron, eh? Iron, right. So, uh, it has uh, three electrodes. Okay. Three electrodes. The first one is the uh, I think alpha, gamma, gamma is at the middle. This is alpha. I think this one is the nama dia. Yang tu pun. Dia punya delta tu ya, delta. Okay, so ferrum kosong yang tak ada apa-apa, besi saja bila dia satu temperature yang tinggi 1500 something, dia dah liquid Okay, so bila dia solidify, at first dia jadi delta Delta ferrum Okay Ferrum ni dia punya structure dia BCC Okay, lepas tu bila dia jadi sejuk sikit dia akan jadi gamma ferrum. So, gamma ferrum ni dia adalah FCC. After that lepas uh, bawah pada 900 something dia akan jadi alpha ferrum. Alpha ferrum ni dia kembali kepada BCC. So this is ferrum. And then from here kita tambah carbon. Okay, carbon masuk. This one we don't pay much attention this one we don't pay much attention we, we focus on this area so this one bila dia um, FCC and it has carbon inside so this is what we call austenite okay austenite basically it is gamma ferrum with carbon okay this is austenite and when it gets uh, below, when it gets into this phase, this alpha, so basically what happened, uh, alpha is BCC, it cannot accommodate this carbon. So from, from, from gamma, from gamma, this is by nature, from gamma become alpha, this is the electrodes of the iron itself. So gamma become gamma become alpha and alpha have very low density a uh, low solubility of carbon so carbon have to be pushed out okay when carbon is pushed out pushed together with ferrum to form uh, iron carbide and uh, okay and at the same No, uh, the pure the alpha ferrum not necessarily pure because there is some soluble, soluble uh, carbon but very very little okay so from here it changed into these two so this is a bit recap now nah. otherwise if you if you don't uh, if you don't have an idea what is austenite then it will be very difficult okay so let's see what happened actually is the um and this what you call this one lah.
Yang ni lah, yang ni lah yang saya kata of the night Okay, of the night Kalau awak ingat, uh, face diagram We have of the night And then we have this Ferrite and perlite And eh, so ferrite and eh, This cementite Ferrite plus cementite is perlite lah Okay, so <clears throat> In between this phase There will be uh, Mixture of austenite and cementite for this this area which we call hyper detectoid and then for the left side we have a mixture of uh, austenite and ferrite so uh, relate that with heat treatment so actually this area gamma which is the austenite okay this area is austenite this area austenite okay this area is perlite ferrite plus cementite this area is austenite plus cementite this area is austenite plus ferrite so when we do the full annealing okay when we do the full annealing Really, we we AC three, AC three is this line, this line. So above AC three, so this area, so the microstructure will be austenite. Okay. At first, low temperature, it is ferrite plus cementite. But when we increase the temperature, it become austenite okay and from the austenite then we cool it off in the furnace in the furnace that is what we call furnace cooling so in the furnace means you left it you just cut the power but you left in the in the furnace environment it is uh, hot it need times to cool off so the cooling is very slow then when we do slow cooling we will get coarse grain and then we will get the uh, ductile material so this is austenizing what happened uh, as far as microstructure is concerned so at first we have this perlite and for the composition which have more iron inside we have the pro eutectoid perlite so all of these at high temperature they will change back into austenite they will change back into austenite so this is what we call austenizing austenizing making it austenite okay after austenizing we leave it cool back to this perlite so that is full annealing that is full annealing so now we go to the annealing number two which is the process annealing so process annealing is very easy it's the one that we have uh, studied before it is used to remove the effect of cool work to release the stress and uh, it is carried out below the tectoid temperature so if you see this uh, again uh, this this uh, phase diagram okay the process annealing takes place here does not even uh, involve any austenizing so uh, process annealing always below the, the the ac1 always be below the ac1 so stress is released when we do rolling we do coal working get the grain so when we do uh, process annealing when we do the process annealing there will be recrystallization so with recrystallization we can get 
the origin ring and our cooling rate. We cool if we if we do it um, uh, if we do it a bit uh, slow too much slow like the full annealing. So it will become cold, but a faster uh, cooling. So okay. So we will have uh, a refined grain. Yeah. So this is process annealing. Process annealing. Just remember the one you studied before. Uh, but just, just we add. The, the the temperature range because yeah last time we we don't really understand uh, the temperature range we don't really pay much attention on the phase diagram now we have learned the phase diagram now we know the process annealing is uh like this okay so uh does not involve austenizing so that is the key point huh? the process annealing uh is uh process just to relieve the stress just to relieve the stress so it does not involve any austenizing and uh the last type of annealing is spherodizing so spherodizing uh because you know because the transformation from austenite into uh, perlite when i say perlite it means ferrite plus cementite okay with this lamella structure that is perlite this is perlite okay so this alternating lamella structure can be altered by uh, spherodizing annealing so instead of having this lamella, the uh, cementite, the cementite, it become round shape. Okay, become round shape. How do we that? We uh, apply heat treatment. So we see we heat just below eutectoid. What is which one? Huh? go back see this we take right or ac1 we take right line or temperature we take that temperature below just below you take that temperature so this is also called ac19 so just be just below this we will have uh, spherodizing effect on the light. So the lamella become round shape. Okay. Okay. So see the cement type in the perlite lamella will transform to spheroidal, and uh, okay. This is the time, the 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 the, the annealing time. So when uh, this uh, spherodized uh, material steel, spherodized steel, it has maximum softness and uh, and ductility. You see, uh, the idea is the same with the with the when we talk about grain, grain, grain size. Okay, we talk about grain. We say that there is a, like if you have coarse grain, this location want to move, so it have to face one grain boundary, two grain boundary to reach here. But if we has more grain boundary. I mean, smaller structure, smaller grain size, it will have to pass through a lot of 
print boundary. So likewise, the same, if in lamella shape, you want to go across this one, you want to go across, so you will have to face many interface, right? interface. And of course, interface, it blocks the dislocation. So when you have this spheroidized, the dislocation is more freely to move. So that is why it becomes more ductile, okay? More easy to machine, okay? So, yes. Uh, just below, okay, this is what we mentioned just now. So other than annealing, we have another uh, process which is called normalizing. So the difference between full annealing and normalizing is that we don't leave the sample in the furnace, rather we take it out, we air cool it. So the, the cooling, the cooling rate is much higher much higher so it will cause the uh, microstructure will change so so as i mentioned just now when we when we leave for slow cooling inside the furnace what happened the material the grain will grow it will cause grain growth okay but if we do it fastly we have a smaller grain and this smaller grain it actually relates to the grain refinement. Okay, and of course, when we have smaller grain, we can increase the strength. And also, oops. Right. So, uh, normalizing is used to reduce compositional segregation in casting. So, I think we have touched on that when we do uh, casting, there will be cord structure due uh, to the difference of temperature. So, to reduce that, to eliminate that, we, we, we apply this kind of process. So these are the the purposes of normalizing, and uh, to put that into the map or into the the phase diagram or into the uh, temperature profile. This is temperature profile. So we do uh, same like full annealing. We heat it up until it become austenite. And then we air cool it. This is different. We air cool it. So when you do the air cooling, you have uh, finer grain compared to the furnace cooling. And uh, well, that is that is about the the the, the annealing and normalizing. Okay, let's see, there is another one, what we call quenching. The quenching is the focus, okay, for normalizing, for annealing, the focus is about uh, heating up the, 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 the material. But quenching is more or less the same, but uh, quenching, the focus, this area instead of leaving it in the furnace or leaving it uh you know to to cool by itself we we make it contact with coolant okay for example you have a block a block of steel for example like this you have a block of steel yeah, you have a block of steel you put inside the furnace you heat up you heat up and uh, until it reach um, 
austenite uh, structure and then you take out quickly uh, with 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 some tools you know and then you put it inside the water or you put inside the oil to to prevent any oxidation so that is quenching that the, the process is called quenching it's like you are very thirsty then you 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 put some water that the same eh? quench very hot you put inside the water or the oil okay so what happened and do when we do quenching when we do quenching oh, okay well to, to define before that to define this quenching is a process of rapid cooling of metal after the heat treatment using water oil or air okay in this process phase transformation at lower temperature do not occur okay okay let's hold that first in general for metals quenching can reduce the crystal grain size of material to increase the hardness okay uh, specifically for steel this process is mainly applied to harden the steel okay from this four point we know that when we take the when we take the uh, uh metal when we take the metal when we quench it the resulting metal will be very hard will be very hard that is because this uh, phenomena okay i hope you guys can see this so what happened actually uh, at first this material when we apply the heat it will become austenite and austenite we know is fcc and austenite have carbon inside of carbon inside so if the cooling goes by conventional like leaving out uh, room temperature or leaving out um, in furnace so this uh, from austenite will become ferrite and cementite but when we put inside the water okay this it wants to change into bcc uh, alpha but but because the process the cooling process happen very fast the carbon have no time to diffuse out so it is trapped the carbon is trapped and this cause the distortion and instead of becoming bcc it become bct and this is what we call martensite this is called what we call the martin site the martin site so martin site the 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 appearance is like this eh? it looks like needle eh? needle shape so if you have metal and then you have a om optical microscope actually you can see whether is what is the structure itself if you have this needle needle pattern it means the material really hard because it has martin side face okay and uh you see because it's very hard okay this is the the, the explanation lah. it has no slip plane no slip plane okay, only a few only certain fcc will transform to bct okay due to number of ten this will cause lattice distortion and due to this quality dislocation throughout the steel will have its motion obstructed okay so we know that uh, there will be distortion and that prevent the dislocation to move and that makes it very hard but the problem with martensitic uh, metal or martensitic steel 
is that it is too much hard, too brittle to use for application. So that is where we uh, introduce what we call tempering. So from this very hard, very brittle, uh, very hard, very brittle uh, martensite, okay, uh, we will um, apply some heat. We will apply some heat at a, uh, elongated time, okay, a prolonged time to let those uh, microstructure to transform from mutton site to structure of iron carbide particle in matrix of ferrite. So this is done eh, at the temperature below the tectoid and below the AC1. And we don't want to involve any austenite transformation. And by doing so, we have from the brittle, very brittle material, we, we can increase the ductility, thus we increase the toughness of the material. And this is how it looks like after tempering. Okay. Okay, so it says here that reheating quench still allow diffusion of interstitial track carbon and hence reduce reduction of the lattice strain. So we have the track carbon. Now we apply some heat. By this heat, this carbon can be mobilized. It can diffuse. Okay, by when it diffuse, then the material will have a less uh, lattice distortion will have, have less strain so the material it can retain or regain the ductility for for it to be applied in application other application so this is the the macro uh, the mechanical properties that uh, reflects with, with our heat treatment. So uh, here is uh, the tempering, uh, tempering process, effect of tempering. So when we, we quench, we, before we do tempering, before we do tempering, the, the microstructure is uh, mostly martensite. So it is very hard. It is very, very strong, but it has very little uh, ductility. So when we apply, the heat, we apply the heat depending on the temperature. So this, uh, this uh, uh, strength, it will reduce a little bit because it is, it become more ductile. Okay, so. Uh, means that the dislocation has more space to move right so well in summary in summary uh, okay I think this is too much writing let's make our summary very simple Okay, in summary, what I want you to remember is um, heat treatment, okay, heat treatment. Okay, now we have heat treatment. Okay, heat treatment, we want to put that into, uh, we do have this, let's, let's use this one. Heat treatment uh, for slow cooling. For slow cooling, we have annealing and normalizing. We have two types. And of course, this annealing just now we discussed, annealing can be divided into three years as well. Full annealing, process annealing, and spheroidizing. Okay. 
annealing, full annealing process and insulating. So slow cooling, we have annealing and normalizing. And the resulting uh, microstructure is perlite plus protected phase. So this is for the hypodetectoid, lah, for the material which has more iron or less carbon. It will have this one. Okay. So, well, mainly it's the perlite, eh, the perlite. And on the other side, we have rapid cooling. We have quenching, eh? rapid cooling through quenching, whether it is by, by water, by oil, by air. So, this very rapid cooling, it causes martensite structure. Why this is? Because the, 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 the high or the rapid cooling does not allow enough time uh, for the carbon to diffuse out of tonight. So it is trapped, okay? Trapped carbon when austenite wants to change to ferrite instead of ferrite so it becomes um gitty mutton side mutton side tempering we do tempering to the strength but it makes the material regain its ductility so that is all that you need to remember. Uh, moderate cooling, we have not yet touched on this benign. But for now, for today's lesson, what I want you to put in mind is that we have slow cooling, we have fast cooling or rapid cooling. In slow cooling, we have annealing and normalizing. Okay, annealing and normalizing. And uh, for rapid cooling, we do quenching, we do quenching and it causes the material to be very hard martensite. And it can be, uh, it can be improvised, the martensite, because it's too brittle, it cannot be used. Okay, so we apply some heat to temper it, so it become more ductile that can be used for applications. And please uh, also you have to remember all this uh, for annealing, full annealing, how is the how is the temperature uh, above AC3, above AM and you need to remember that uh, the uh, the purpose whether to make the, the material ductile or just uh, you want to relieve the stress, okay? So does it involve austenizing? So all of this you have to be clear on this. You have to be clear on this. So uh, I think that is all uh, for the heat treatment. We do have uh, two other lectures for iron carbon system, but that will be after the holiday. Okay, so that is all the lecture today. Are you guys still with me or some of you already fall asleep? Tengah hari. Ada lagi? Alright, bagus. Ada, ada. Masih ada. Masih ada, okay. Bagus. Tak ada lah yang untuk syllabus sebelum raya ni sampai situ saja. So, saya akan upload. I hope you guys uh, can catch whatever I mentioned just now and tomorrow we have tutorial class uh, tutorial we quite belakang lah kuat ketinggalan eh our tutorial I think still mechanical strengthening So tomorrow, so you guys uh, have a look. Um, okay.
Okay, so anyway, see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. If you have Thank any you, question, you can ask by WhatsApp.